Kia ora tātou, ko Mary Ahau. I'm living here in Rehiwai after having spent most of my life working away from here. Albeit I went to Horohora Primary School, then to Whangarei Intermediate School, and then to Whangarei Girls High School. And I left Whangarei Girls High School with the qualification of university entrance. And I'm rather proud of that because I sat it and wasn't accredited. So yeah. I'm rather proud of that little qualification. And there's a little story to that because I'd never really thought about um, qualifications because my mother particularly simply expected you to succeed. Yeah. You, you and there was no such thing as failure. But it wasn't until perhaps a couple of years ago, maybe a little while longer, I was talking with Linda Smith. Professor Linda Smith, and um, she was talking about how she had set the university entrance at, at high school. And, um, and then I began to think then, oh, this maybe has some substance, <laughs> this qualification. I know it had a lot of hard work, yeah. And um, I know all education, whether it be schooling at early childhood, or schooling in primary school, intermediate, or education tertiary, at tertiary level, hard work. It's the key, hard work. Hard work, um, commitment, and understanding that that commitment is your obligation back to your parents, back to your siblings, back to your first cousins, second cousins. That's always in your mind, always, never leaves, never leaves. Um, so always aware of hard work and the collective. Most of my life up until the age of 16 was spent in Whangarei and a great deal of that life was spent on this harbour. My grandparents lived across the road. Um, my uncles farmed up there. My father was born in the paddock next door. Um, my father and his parents and siblings are buried in the Urupa down the road. So this is very much my father's home, therefore my home. But I also spent a lot of time raised across the harbour at Tamataro. We grew up on that harbour. Our dad knew all the mahinga kai. Now, he taught us the mahinga kai, not by um, a lecture, but by taking us to those places. And I'd have to say it's not until I was much, much, much older that I realised, oh, that's not just a fishing spot, that's a mahinga kai. <laughs> So that was our playground, the bush, the sea, the mangroves, the beach, picnics, netting, fishing, digging for pippies, eating oysters on the rocks, yes, coming down to Te to Marston Point to collect um, mussels, netting at uh, Arakahika, for piper and herring that became the bait. We didn't eat herring or piper, we only ate snapper. We didn't eat mussels, that was, that was looked down upon. It was not a kite that was uh, of rank, so to speak. Yes, yes, it was not. We collected them and took and gave them away, but that was not our food. Our food was snapper and cockles. The harbour is filthy. Um, the seabird, particularly from here out at Takawe, he went back to Whangare, would be covered in mud. The sand bank or the tahuna that used to go run down the middle of the harbour from Onarahi to Te Kauhu has gone. It's probably footpaths in Whangarei and 
part of the Busk's concrete business. It's gone. So there's no kaimoana because there's no bank. There's no kaimoana of, of abundance in the mangroves because of the mud. The other reason, of course, is too historic. We have had our land confiscated and the economic base that is part of owning land is not, is not one of our um, here for Te Parafau and uh, Patuharakeke o Te Parafau. We're landless people. I think it would be fair to say that Māori from the hapu in Whangarei, Te Parafau who are there, uh, Ngāti Kahu o Torungare, um, together with Patuharakeke o Te Parafau, Te Parafau ki tai, um, we are in solidarity opposed to the North Port digging up 80 acres of land, albeit under the water. It's land. Um, that land has life. That land has ancient life. That life, that land has life that will never be remade. Two, two, widow, two challenges. A strong reminder to Northport, to Northland Regional Council, to Whangarei District Council, to the Green Party, to the Māori Party, to the National Party, to the Labour Party, to government, that Māori are human. We're not rubbish. We are human. The other one, the other challenge is always we're human. We continue to hope. We are forever hopeful to restore the land that has been beaten and whipped, slashed and smashed and bashed is probably not possible even with technology. But then again, human will is marvellous. Um, I, I think what we can do, well, I know what we can do. We can clean it up. We can clean it up. <laughs>